These days, it is not enough to just be a great artist or maker. If you want to sell your products online, you have to learn how to run a business and do marketing right. So if you're an Etsy seller or you're interested in starting a shop on there, stay on to watch this video where I'll share with you the four most common mistakes that creatives make with their Etsy shop, which could be costing you sales. So you can fix those issues and position your shop to make a lot more sales. Hi, my name is May Park, and I help makers, artists, and designers make a living selling their products online. I recently posted a video on how we made over $200,000 on Etsy in just four months. And just like in that video, I need to preface in this one as well, that if you've been following me for a while, you know that I don't recommend you focus all of your time on your Etsy shop, but that you should focus your time on your own website instead. Etsy is a great place as a different stream of income and sales for diversification, but it shouldn't be your primary stream of income. So having said that, let's dive into the four most common mistakes I see with Etsy shops. The first mistake I see is sellers don't really know who is going to buy their product. This is so important because it helps you to price your product and personalize everything in your listing towards that person so that they feel your listing was created just for them. Etsy is growing each year and with over two and a half million sellers, it's so easy to just blend in with everyone else. And if you've watched my other videos, which show you how the Etsy algorithm works, you'll know that standing out from the crowd is super important. And that's where knowing your ideal customer comes in. Have you ever bought something where you felt like it was made just for you and everything about that shopping experience and product really resonated with you from the product itself, the way the product description was written, the product photos, the shop's brand colors, the way the seller responded to your messages? You were that shop's ideal customer. So turn the tables. Think about who your ideal customers are. Do they earn a modest living or are you aiming your products at people with large disposable incomes? Do they work full time? Do they read and what do they read? Do they like bright colors or monotone? Do they like lots of furniture and stuff or are they minimalist? When you start to think more about who your ideal customer is, getting your products to stand out, appeal to them and make sales becomes so much easier. Think of this another way, right? Have you ever applied for a job with one resume or a CV, but then applied for a different job with a different resume because the normal one wasn't specifically relevant to that company? Writing your listings is the same here. The more you know who your ideal customers are, the better you can personalize your products and listings to them, and the more likely you are to make sales. I have another great video here where I talk about my coattail technique in how you can very quickly and for free find your ideal customers online. The second mistake that people make is not taking enough time with their photos. Think of these as like your shop window. And if you don't like the shop window or there's nothing special or interesting about it, you don't go into the shop, right? Your shop window must clearly showcase what your product is and how it's different. Most listings on Etsy for a particular keyword search shows you a ton of listings that all kind of look the same, more or less, but they're all from different shops. So how does a potential buyer make the choice to click on one listing over the other? They'll likely pick a listing that fits within their price range, but even if the prices were all about the same, the customer will choose the listing that stands out to them the most. So what can you do to make sure your photos are different from other shops selling something similar? I've got a great two-part video series about taking product photos right here, so you can check that out here for photography tips if you need some help. And that brings me to the third mistake, not learning how to do SEO and keyword research. It's one of those tasks that creatives put off, but with how big online marketplaces are getting these days, it is really important, even if you have the most unique and best product ever. I can't stress this enough. Your product will not sell itself, okay? You need to get it seen by potential ideal customers, and one way to do that is by making sure your listings are appearing in Etsy search. But how do you do that? by adding keywords to your listings that you know your ideal customers are searching for to find a product like yours. Now there's no surefire way to know what those keywords will be and that's why this is an iterative process that requires patience, testing, and being organized with what you've tested and what worked and what didn't. And a keyword that works for one shop may not work great for you. So this is truly a personal thing that you have to just do on your own. For doing Etsy SEO, we like using a software called eRank. 
They have a free version so you can test it out. It's really great for doing keyword research as it gives you a ton of data that Etsy itself doesn't show you. Although to get access to the co those cool keyword data features like search volume, Etsy competitions, search trends, and so on, you would need a paid account. But it is well worth it if you know how to use the tool correctly. Basically, the concept of doing keyword research is the same regardless of what platform you're doing it for, whether that's for Etsy, Amazon, or Google search. You want to select keywords that have high search volume, which means a lot of buyers are using that keyword in Etsy search. But you also want the keyword to have low competition, which means that not a lot of other shops are using that same keyword. But of course, everyone is doing exactly that, so it can be quite challenging to find good keywords that match that criteria. So the next best thing is to use long tail keywords that have lower search volume and low competition. As you can see, based on what I've been talking about, it is a process of research and a lot of patience, but it is super important that you do this right. But definitely check out eRank and then join their free Facebook group where they provide a ton of coaching and support. Mistake number four is not prioritizing customer service on Etsy. Now, I have always believed that customer service is super important, but it is even more so on Etsy because Etsy has very specific requirements that you as a seller need to follow in order to stay within Etsy's good side you will get penalized for providing poor customer service repeatedly. For example, if you have too many open orders that are late and haven't shipped yet, or if you keep getting less than five star feedback, like if your product keeps breaking or your product description wasn't accurate, so people are getting a product they weren't expecting, those things will reflect poorly on your shop. And Etsy does pay attention. It's a slippery slope and the further down you go, don't be surprised if your Etsy listings suddenly stop appearing in Etsy search and you stop getting traffic. A more common customer service problem I've seen is sellers who respond super slowly. You would ideally respond to messages within 24 hours and anything beyond that and customers do tend to get pretty upset or lose trust in you as a seller. Another common issue is not going above and beyond to help your customer out. For example, if a customer says their package didn't arrive or it was crushed, or the item wasn't a color they liked, or the size didn't fit them. I've just seen so many sellers make the mistake of becoming really defensive and then not wanting to help because it costs money to address the situation, whether that's with remaking the product or reshipping out a new product to the customer. But put yourself in the buyer's shoes and think about how you would like to be treated if you were the customer. Because I have a healthy profit margin with my prices, I can afford to remake and reship orders on my own dime if it means making a customer happy. Remember that whatever experience they have with your shop is what they will remember and what they will walk away with. And you don't want the last thing they think about to be something negative or they'll never buy from you again. Or worse, they'll tell everyone that they know not to buy from you. If you enjoyed this video, stay on to watch this next video on the screen here. I only like sharing stuff that I know works so I'm sure this next video will help you out as well. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this because that helps tell YouTube that this content was good and YouTube will help show it to more people.